Today, we're going to take a look at this Tektronix Type 503 oscilloscope. It was produced from 1960 to 1973. First, we'll take a look at the controls and how it functions, and then we'll take it apart and look at how it is constructed. Here is the bottom portion of the front panel. The first thing you'll notice is that there are differential inputs for both the vertical and horizontal. Sensitivity controls for the horizontal and vertical along with the DC balance for both. Then we've got vertical position and horizontal position. Focus, intensity, power and scale elimination, some calibration outputs, and a magnifying switch here. You can select times 2, times 5, times 10, times 20, and times 50. And if you turn it all the way to this position, it puts it into what we would call XY mode. At the top portion here, we've got the time base, the trigger level control, and other trigger parameters like triggering on positive or negative slopes, the coupling, and the source. You can either choose internal, external, or line. Here's our external trigger input. And of course, here is the screen itself. And on the back, we've got, of course, a fuse and this handy line cord holder along with the very dirty line cord. At the top here, we've got our external input for the CRT grid, also known as the Z input, or you could also call it the intensity modulation input. Now, let's take the thing apart and see what the construction is like on the inside. On the inside, you can see that the build quality is absolutely fantastic. You can see these really nice big wafer switches over here with a bunch of high precision 1% resistors. You can also see all of the different calibration controls that are accessed by the other side. And, some, and you can also see some other various trimmer capacitor adjustments down here. We do have one tube down here on the, what I guess you'd call the rear side of the chassis, which is mounted on its side. We've, and then down here we've got the main power transformer with a little transformer down here that's been modded in. This is for the CRT filament, which you can see running down to these red wires, which are just tacked in place here. And then down here is the power supply, and you can, see, you can probably see all these filter, the bottom of all the filter caps here. Down here We've got a high voltage diode that I put in there to replace the original uh, vacuum tube rectifier, which I will show in a minute. If we take a look here, we can see that it comprises of these ceramic standoffs that have these U channels carved into them, and in each channel, We've got these U-shaped pieces of metal that are silver-plated and soldered with silver solder. We will see later in the teardown that they even included some silver solder, so you can do repair on this. Because if you use regular solder, you have a chance of breaking the bond between the ceramic substrate here 
and the U piece, the U shaped piece of metal here. So here's the other side of the oscilloscope. As you can see, this side has a lot of tubes. Some up here, some down here, which are the deflection tubes, I believe. And then here are the other side of these calibration controls. And then over here, we've got our power supply and horizontal output tube, I believe. And then we've got a regulator tube down here. I believe it's an 85 volt regulator. An absolute ton of electrolytics, which will all need to be changed at some point, which I plan on doing in the future. And you also may notice that there are actually some transistors in here, which are down here. There is one hiding up here. You just can't see it that well. I've actually replaced this one. But the rest are the original metal can transistors. Newer versions of this scope used new vistors, which, if you don't know, are basically the last vacuum tubes made, which were made in the 70s, um, which are these really small tubes that are about this big. And I guess you could mistake them as transistors if you weren't careful. So you may be asking, where is that solder you were telling about? Well, I had a hard time finding it at first, and it turns out it's back here. You may not be able to see it, but I can pull it out. And here it is, a little roll of solder. Before I get started with the demo, here is that old high voltage rectifier tube that I, re that I replaced with that diode. Just thought uh, it was really cool looking and worthy to show. Real quick, before I start the demonstration, I'd like to apologize for the flickering trace. I thought I had my camera ad properly adjusted for that, but it turned out I didn't. So, just thought I'd apologize real quick. But without any further ado, let's start the demonstration. So here we are. The scope is all warmed up. And I've got my Rigol DS1054 over here generating the test signal which you can barely see over here. It's slightly, it's mostly off camera. So, if we turn the scale elimination control here, we will see the graticule illuminate. We can vary that. And now we can turn up the intensity. We will only see a dot because it is in what you'd call XY mode. So now let's turn it all the way over here to sweep normal position and let's give it some more in intensity. And now you can see a nice bluish trace. Let's give it some focus here. If we vary the time base, we can vary the speed at which it sweeps. So if we turn it all the way down here, that is 0.5 seconds per division. Very slow. And we can go all the way down to 5 seconds per division. For now, we'll keep it at around 1 microsecond per division. Let's give it some more brightness. Let's bring it up a little bit. I forgot to mention before, these are, are our input switches here. We can, we can do DC coupling or AC coupling. We're going to need to put it at AC coupling. You may have noticed that it has gone off the screen. 
So let's adjust the sensitivity here. And there's our trace. We got a nice one kilohertz square wave. Let's adjust the time base so that we can see it in greater detail. Some more intensity. And now we can see a nice square wave. If we use the horizontal positioning, we can center that on one down slope here. So there's, we've got it centered on one side of that square wave there. And now we can use the sweep magnification switch here to magnify that point on the square wave. Let's adjust it over a little bit. We can adjust that. We can magnify that. Let's give it some more intensity. See now we've magnified this. According to the switch here, we've magnified it by 10 times. And we can get quite a bit of detail. If we go even further, we can really magnify that. It's very dim down at this lower magnification. But as you can see, that magnification switch would be very handy when analyzing a signal. As you can see, it works pretty good for being over 50 years old with little to no restoration. So hopefully in the future, you'll be seeing more about this oscilloscope because I plan on doing at least some sort of a restoration series on this. It probably won't be a very long series because there's not really a whole lot to do with this. There are very few paper capacitors in here. And then we've got those electrolytics that need to be changed, most likely. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this look at a Tektronix Type 503 oscilloscope. From around this particular unit, from around most likely the early 60s, maybe 63, uh, if I would have to guess. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.